So we sincerely thank the McClepper's family for giving us the opportunity to come back and meet old friends and just enjoy the memories of what it was like in the 40s, 50s, 60s. And I noticed a few of the younger generation here who wouldn't have experienced this kind of ballroom dancing. And let's hope that let's hope that they take it all in and maybe get some idea of what it was like in those days because it really was it really was something. Some powerful nights in Chester Green that the whole was packed. Toby and Mr. McPatties were two of the nicest people you could have met. Castle Green was to half a crown. The and and, and Cushion Dole was half a crown again. That was only that's fifteen pence a day. When I say pipe, in them days two hundred people was some people. And on me all year. It was some people. And they were all enjoying them, every one of them. And they were all good dancers too. But they danced the I think the certain bit was you'd had a killy dancer two through it, you know. well, I was a battle player and you all the boys from Cullibay and they used to come on a Saturday night and play in our house. And there were Johnny and me and we were sat and laughing at them. And then when I grew up to was I think it was maybe fifteen when I started to play the fiddle. And I had a great notion of the fiddle and traditional music and and you all the boys, all the traditional men around the country and uh, we used to go to Johnny Joe's and we met a lot of people there that, that we knew and then people followed us to Castle Green. Jay and Kevin and Sugar Man Alley and me was started the band and well they were all on there. Jay was a great singer, Jay McLean and a great man for talking you to the people. I was working on the railway and I couldn't learn there. Nobody knew about the of it, so from the boys at that time. We had it at uh, Clap Ledger and Shimmer's Brewing to the band. And Clap Ledger was a big, big hat to the band. He was one of these a proper showmen. Well, the, the Glen were really alive there. It was just a dancing time. It was the start, it was the start of the shoe band. Crazy. That's what started it. Because before that would have been a paddling and an accordion you would be playing at the absolutely not planned to be such a big time in people's life. And that's when, when young people get sort of elaborated. When anybody mentions Castle Green, I the thing that sticks in my mind is being taught by nuns. I went to Star of the Sea in Valley Castle. I was still at school. Castle Green was the place to go. <laughs> well at that time we're from ten to two. So you got ready to go all day getting ready, you know. And our all week nearly getting ready because you know, you got your clothes ready and you had them hanging up and and then that day when you had to wash your hair and there was no hair dryers. And if you had long hair you had to curl it up, which I had to do and clip it and sit in front of the fire till it dried. There wasn't an awful lot of cars at that time, so you mainly had to walk. Castle Green was handy, so you would have walked. You might have got a lift, and you wore high heels. You had so little choice of, you, well practically no choice of clothing. You had a, your skirt that you had turned up. You maybe had two skirts and three tops and I didn't wear makeup. Well number one, it wasn't sort of the damn thing then and I didn't have the money to buy it. The long blonde hair was quite natural so it was washed, dried and off you went to Castle Green. You had your dress all ironed and you were going out thinking you were lovely and then you all piled into a van but you got out you never looked as if you were greased or it. You were that excited going to the dance. It was the atmosphere. It was a great atmosphere. There was great excitement when you walked um, and it was during the summer when you um there was a lot of strangers about and you met a lot of different people. So you did. We were in the class and she got on her high horse. She looked and she said, Does anybody attend 
Castle Green Dance Hall and myself and I think two others put their hand up. She emphasised the fact that the devil was present at Castle Green and you were not to go back. I came home, I told my ma, my da, my da is a Protestant, my ma she said, oh mother, my, my, you know, the cloven foot, sacred heart of Jesus, you'll never be back there. My dad says, oh listen, that's a load of nonsense. You were allowed to jive at that time in Castle Green. You weren't allowed to jive in some other places. So that meant an awful lot. And the show bands were great. It was a, you always felt the excitement when you walked up the stairs and then you went into the hall and the show band was on your right hand side. The groups that you have, well the show bands were like that to us. We couldn't wait till the next week. Blag the lift again. Over and no, well, number one, we couldn't see any handsome young men. There was a room where they sold at that time we called it minerals, and they, if you, you maybe a boy would have said to you, Do you like the minerals? and if you liked them, you said yes, and if you weren't so sure, you said I wasn't thirsty. Maybe it was a week or two weeks and we blagged the left again and over. And my friend, she says to me, there, look, look. And in came this fella, and I can see him to this day, near enough like an Elvis look, if you know, the hair, black hair, very handsome. And I'm saying, Gee, look. And she says to me, cloven foot or not, if he asks me, I'm in there. At the time of the... I was in Castle Green, I suppose I was I was about my late twenties at that time. And I was I used to go down on a Friday night and there were a cousin of mine down the door lifting the money and I kept an eye inside that there were no trouble. But at that time it wasn't wasn't so bad because there were no drink of selling in it. There certainly could, uh, there was no drink at all sold in it. Anybody had any drink had it taken before that to made me my me braids or and cushion the old something and uh, it wasn't so much rouse about. Sometimes an old time and you try and get the boy out if you could and if you didn't get him out then you had to take him out, which was a bit difficult because it was there were stairs up to it. And like it's alright putting boys taking boys out of a door if you on the ground floor, but taking them down from the next to the Castle Green dance hall down the stairs and you had to make all the I always made sure I stayed in front of the boy, I'd have him by the neck <laughs> and I'd give him up and land him on down and about two two lifts I would have him down at the bottom of the stairs and put him out the door. Well my first memories of Castle Green would have been when I was about say ten or eleven years of age and there was an anniversary in for Mr. and Mr. McFetridge and and the kindness because I started playing a bit of a musician of piano lessons, but I started playing guitar and mouth organ together. They asked me to come along and play at the night. There was a good show band there that night, and there was lots of good musicians. And there was well, just as a youngster, as a novel, they end up and played played a couple of tunes. And I was overwhelmed even back at that early age of the, you know, the hospitality of Mr. McFerries and and everything about the hall. It was an exciting place to go. The only way I could get to the, the dance in Castle Green was if I'd done the ironing in the house. So I had made an agreement with Mammy that they, I would do the ironing. So of course, Friday come, good dressed, my nice tank top, and I headed off to Castle Green. I left in Notting Carry, so sort I'm of walking up to Castle Green to my mates, and maybe a wee later on when you're old enough to have a beer or something, you had a couple of drinks. And so the local pub and Pat Hamilton's or McBride's or whatever, and he walked up the road. And as he got near Castle Green, it was amazing how many cars that had been there. There were cars lined right for a good mile before you got to the hall. And by this stage, it would have been bombed. And I mean, at nine o'clock, it was absolutely packed. And uh, you had to go up the wee stairs at the Castle Green. But at the back of the hall you could reach up, I remember, well, more when I was older, when you could reach up actually and touch the ceiling once you were an adult. As regarded that and the whole atmosphere in the dance place, it would be like a lot of country dances would have been in them days, local 
Look at fellas going to help me to look at girls, and the girls would, would intend to get lined up on one side hoping to be asked for a dance, or maybe some of them nervous enough to be hoping not to be asked for a dance. I, at that stage, I had known a brave lot of the bands. I always wore a pair of cowboy boots, and I had a mouth organ down inside of the cowboy boot. And I would get talking to the band, and then they would invite me up to play on the stage. You could have felt the, the the floor move and, and the building, the tight the body felt the floor move, but which because of the way McFedders is around the place and because of the nature of the hall and the nature of the people down there, at the, that uh, movement in the floor maybe sort of gave the place its own heartbeat. I haven't got the length of the, the stage and then come two policemen. And it was a sergeant and the constable from Cushendall and of course they spied me and out I went with them. And they took me down to my ma and I was pleading with them the whole time that I was allowed to go to the dance. They said that I was too young to go to the dance, so I might have been only 13 at that time. I waited till they went away and then headed back up to Castle Green. That was my first introduction to what Castle Green was actually like. That behind that shop and those very friendly people and their hospitality, there was this lovely wee dance hall. The concert started by a brother-in-law of mine, in fact. Uh, uh, in Ballymena uh, as a shadows type group uh, guitars, three guitars and a drummer the show bands were the thing then and they decided oh we'll get a saxophone player got a chap called John Sergeant and we needed a singer then and we interviewed a couple of singers and in fact one of the singers we interviewed was Davy McWilliams we recorded uh, the days of Pearly Spencer he wrote and some Davy was rejected because Davy was more of a folk singer and he wasn't what the Cossacks were looking for. It wasn't because Davy wasn't good, it was because he wasn't the type of music we were looking for country and western uh, stuff. And, and uh, this chap Jimmy Lim came down and uh, I think his first song was Send Me the Pillow That You Dream On. Yeah, that was perfect. That was perfect. Castle Green was one of the first as we started off the dances there were terrific. I mean, the place was full of, of uh, people from Scotland who were there on, on holidays. Uh, Belfast. Uh, I had a girlfriend from Belfast. She used to come down to Waterfoot for her holidays. And she you would have arrived in Castle Green, and here was this young girl from Belfast at the dance in Castle Green. I mean, the the, the dance hall there, the floor went up and down, and. and uh, uh, it, it was it was pretty packed. Well, my memories of Castle Green are very fond memories. When we come down here every year from Belfast, my parents I rented a house out for the month of July in the main street here in Waterford. Uh, I have very, very fond memories of Castle Green and going over the mountain, as we said. Are you going over the mountain for a dance? But the great thing about Castle Green Dance Hall was it was small and it was very friendly, very homely place to go to. My memories of Castle Green go back to my very early teenage years, which was actually in the 1950s. Uh, it was the highlight of the week, getting ready and going to Castle Green. It attracted a different sort of a crowd. You know, Cushendall seemed to get the crowd from around the coast to maybe Glenravel. Castle Green got that crowd as well. But attracted more people from what we talked with the boys over the mountain, from Valley Castle, Armoy, Clock Mills. It was a very well run establishment, but you had more freedom, you could wear what you liked. There was nobody looking over their shoulders to tell you your dress was too short, which it well could have been in those days, that would have been frowned on in the Brookhead Hall. There was absolutely no alcohol. Uh, we didn't need alcohol. The atmosphere was electric. It was good music, it was good dance. I was mad about fishing, that was my main interest. And every time I was lost, they found me round at the pier. And even before the dances, I was dressed in my red skirts and my frilly petticoats <laughs> underneath. And I was still at the pier, and sometimes I got the odd bit of a snail on the end of my lovely dresses. And I had my tissues <laughs> rubbing them, you know, before I went off to the dance. We were all learning to drive then. And the great thing about coming out of Ballycastle, once you got to the top of the mountain, 
you could switch your car off and you freewheeled all the way down to the dam so it didn't cost you all that much and the same way when you drove out of uh, when you were 17 or 18 um, you drove out of Castle Green you got up the top of the mountain uh, to the Vanishing Lake just beyond the Vanishing Lake switched her off and you steamed the whole way in through Carry to Ballycastle Free so you were free wheeling up and plus uh, if there was fog in the mountain or anything like that uh, there was always cat's eyes that was a great thing you could go home with the cat's eyes in those days there wasn't the traffic you know you'd have two or three cars going and you'd have the cars parked the whole way up the road the Ballycastle side The music was always good uh, it was a strong floor so therefore it was just idea for jiving and um, at that time jiving was the in way to dance uh, we wore big high heel shoes and it was the days of the hoops and the petticoat or the net petticoats so you had big wide flowing skirts and you burned around and you jived all night you were just there for a really good night's dancing and a good night's crack and then of course it was all walking then so when we'd be walking along the road, the chaps then, it was all tractors, no cars. So we used to get a lift, my friends and I, on the back of a tractor. Sometimes we were lucky to get a lift in a car. But it was all very happy times without all the cars on the road. And we used to have to pull our skirts up and hold them in a the bunch just for us to get room to sit on the tractor. That was mainly when we were going to Castle Green. And the summer it was r r lovely and warm and you'd had the little vents, I remember them getting opened and the fresh air blowing across and you'd had a crowd, it didn't take much to crowd it out, but it always a, a very good crowd under the dance halls. It was, they were always packed, I suppose Sixpence got you a bottle of lemonade, you brought your girlfriend in for a lemonade at the back and uh, if things were going well you would said uh, one of the famous catchphrases was get your coat, your pillow. You didn't have to show your date of birth or your passport or anything like that because you wouldn't have had a passport um, I still have been in school but first of all in the very early teens you had to sort of get around your parents and know whether you were going to be allowed to go or not and then it was what dress you were going to wear and you were getting a hoop into your petticoat and if it was a paper and iron petticoat it used to be uh, if you didn't have starch now this is really silly but you could have starched that with sugar Right, and you put it out in the line. So the stiffer the dress was, the better, because the more your skirt stood out. The formula, it was a magic formula, worked for it. And uh, the, the families, and the good fun, and you made friends, uh, friends for life, friends maybe never seen again. And it was, <clears throat> you didn't realise how good it was. You know, that's the whole thing. You just take everything for granted. And now we're just living a, a different generation as we do now of, of people posing and uh, uh, fidgeting in phones and staring at phones and not talking. Uh, those days you chatted and you got in and you put four, and four pennies in a phone. You used the phone <laughs> three times a year uh, <laughs> um, and that would be the height of it, you know. And you just call around to see people. And you said, look, maybe I'll see you at the dance, maybe I won't. You know, maybe I'll be there, maybe I won't. You just, people took it easy, it's easy come, easy go. Uh, changed ways till today. Uh, we live in a hyper society that everybody knows everything and they're, they're on the internet all the time and it's all planned out and they spend hours and hours getting ready for these social scenes and so on, champagne, etc. But, um, uh, the champagne those days was orange just in a bottle with a straw on it. Well, probably the, the group of us who went there in those days, that was our very early teenage years. And then later on in life, we were working and living in Belfast. And although there had been availability of a dance hall to us probably every night of the week, we still always wanted to be off to come home to dance in Castle Green. And that group of people are now were scattered all over the place, some in New Zealand. Some are in Australia, some girl down south. But if and when we meet up or we contact each other, we would always talk about the good nights we had in Castle Green. Mr McFadage <coughs> and our Bobby and even the fam and the family, they were first class people. You couldn't have done enough for you. 
and after the dance would be over, the old Master McFay takes a big table down in that a big table down in the kitchen and she had a buns and sandwiches and the band was taken down for tea and all and I had to go with them and went in and with a bit of crack that's how I got to know all the, the band men. <coughs> well, the Lewis's band would be there. Oh, I got I had a wee car on my own at that time, a wee green, a wee green money. And I dove down with a wee green money. And I would just wore me, well, you would an open neck shirt in the summer to me, maybe a jersey or maybe no, maybe just a shirt if you're... At that time when people were going to dances, most of them went with a collar and tie. They go now to dances, even to the even to the even to the church and chapel and places. They go now old jeans. God, the people wouldn't have been seen out old jeans go to you know go to a dance at that time. I'd be all that suit, suit and tie. Oh, I dressed dressed like a new pan. And you had to be dressed up because if you weren't dressed up, the girls wouldn't look at you at all. I was just. Uh, there were plenty of people that went to it, it was all as packed out, I didn't hold that big a lot, you know, a sort of big place, and there were, seemed to be, it was Castle Green, if everybody said they were dancing Castle Green the night, they would have to be going, they'd have to be going, everybody had to go to Castle Green, Kevin Murray loved Cushion Dunn, and Kevin was, Kevin would be there, and he was a very great dancer, put the cell about that night, swing them around, and Man, he could to show, show them round the room or the dance hall. I thought, Curtin, and you see, they come near the end of the dance. Come, come near the end of the dance. They wouldn't be some, if, you know, you'd be a good lot of weird look in the crowd, you know. And what was it? You yeah, always know what was wrong. The boys and the girls were away all out of walk. They were curtain up along on big ditch next to Molly Chats, along big ditch. And <laughs> I heard a different car up. There was a line in them curtain up along. <laughs> Nowadays, they could in the cars now. There were no cars hardly at that time, there many cars. My engagement, that was the one big thing for me. Um, yeah. I lived in Cushendall. I would have been 17, 18, 19. What did I work at? I was still at school up until 18, and then I went to Belfast to work in the civil service. Well, I was a bit older. Uh, I lived in the nearest town up to the road, Balamina, and in 1962, I think it was maybe when I came down to Castle Green, and I was 20 years of age at that time. I drove my own car at that time. I was uh, in the meat trade in Balamina. And uh, I worked there and then come down here looking for strange and loose one. <laughs> and I was neither. <laughs> In 1965 we got engaged. Um, we were in Belfast, we spent the day in Belfast and then down to Castle Green that night. I remember as well, it was the Fontana show band who were playing and I was dancing around showing off my sparkler. Um, and then I was 20 at that time and we got married the following year. We're married 52 years now. We got married in 1966. Uh, I drove down and then drove home. And uh, if the dance was on on Castle Green, we would uh, go out there and dance. In those days, you used to have a group of friends in Bellamina and they would all take a drink and in these days Joe and I didn't drink and he was a very popular boy because he always could give them a lift home. We always enjoyed the local bands that came from around the locality, some out of Balamina and some from other parts of the country. But it was also nice that a local hall in the locality, the McFedrish family that ran the, the, the that dance hall. It was nice that all the local people could go there at night for a night's crack. So on a, the night of our engagement we danced in Castle Green. I'm at Castle Green. Uh, we played a lot around that neck of the woods when we were younger. Um, Cushion Dunn, Cushion Doll and of course Castle Green. That was owned by the McFetley's family. They were lovely people. They treated you very well when, when the bands arrived, there was a huge spread for us, big meal, and then we played our, our show, and then 
the phone went home with another tea and sandwiches, whatever it was. Very well looked after, and always looked forward to going down there because it was, although it was a small venue, um, there was a lot of. Uh, it didn't take many people to fill it up, so it was a great atmosphere in the place. The great dance floor, and everybody had a great time. We were very young at the time, just kids. And I would have been about 18 or 17 or 18, and uh, just making my way. And I was a, an apprentice welder at the time. Uh, my mother insisted that you'd get a trade, get get something to fall back on. This music could not last forever, and so I was. I had to do five years of this uh, this welding stuff, and uh, as soon as that was over in August 1967, I I quit, and I went full time as a musician. Of course, as the years went on, things changed. Robin, the big lead singer, he got married and. He left and went to Canada, and it was charged to me, I suppose, to be the singer. Uh, we, I think we interviewed a f or auditioned a couple of guys as the lead singer, and they didn't, they didn't measure up to what we were looking for, so we just stayed as a seven-piece, and I was the lead singer, and that's, that's more or less how, I, how my career started as a singer. One incident, coming home from Castle Green, we used to hire this van from a guy in Balaki called Tommy McElean and we would hire him to drive us about and uh, we used to put the equipment in his van on his roof because we needed, needed the rest of the van to carry all the eight members and one night going back from Castle Green up through Cushendall and to Ballymena and uh, we realised when we arrived home, because when we arrived home in Mahrakal, even though it was three or four o'clock in the morning, we had to take all the equipment off the roof because Tommy had something else to do with the van the next day. So all hands took the gear off and put it under my mother's porch because we discovered the next morning when we were checking the equipment or wherever we were going the next time that there was a symbol missing from Davy's drum kit. I mean, this would have been a, a, a very expensive symbol that he bought. It must have fell off the van somewhere along the way and we never, we never saw it again. Devastated. My brother was devastated losing this symbol. So that's, that's the kind of things that you get up to when you're, when you're driving around the country in a van. Our Castle Green is the, is the McFatty's family. Even after the dances were all over, years passed and I would have met up with a couple of the daughters at, at various venues along the way in the 80s and they would tell me or ask me, do you remember playing in Castle Green? And I would say, yes, I do. Of course, I do remember. Uh, we always enjoyed going down there. 